what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Views for Build. In today's episode, we are working on the cheapest WRX STI in the world. It's our $3,000 STI that we got because it was flooded. So far we have deflooded it, but it's running a little bit rough. So what we're gonna do is uh, it has an error for a coolant temperature sensor. We're gonna go ahead and replace that. We're gonna swap out the fuel in case any of the fuel got water in it or got bad. We're gonna get this thing running a little bit better. Then we got a button up the front. We got some new headlights for it. We got our bumper. We're gonna do some small fixes and stuff like that. And then we're gonna get it on the street for the first time and do our first like little test drive around the neighborhood. Stay tuned. So this part's a little bit weird. Uh, the, the, some of the stuff's already been done um, because basically what's happened right now and is gonna keep happening in the future is I need to travel for different business deals or races or other things like that. But we still have Oscar and Kyle here uh, eager to work on the cars. So uh, what I did is I had to leave, I had to go to California um, and they jumped on doing the air, uh, no, the coolant temperature sensor. So you're gonna see the alternator come off, coolant temperature sensor getting replaced, uh, flushing all the bad fuel through the system. So we just pumped it straight out of the car, put a new, uh, and new good fuel in there, as well as um, oil, uh, the new oil change. So now that all that stuff is done, we got fresh fuel in here and the coolant temperature sensor is in here. Let's go ahead and give it a start up. You guys remember before, it was kind of struggling to start up. Um, <clears throat> and when it's cold, it seems to be a little bit slow and that might be part of the tune. And we also have the TVG deletes. But anyways, Kyle, go ahead and try to fire it up. So that's not that bad. Now, we have a, one of these pulleys seems a little bit loud, but it's really not that loud. I don't know, seems like we'll just leave it. Um, and uh, it's doing a lot better with holding its uh, holding its revs. If we rev it up, it's not dying out. Uh, so the engine's performing just so so much better. We'll go ahead and go ahead and cut it so we don't die from. So the engine is running pretty nicely. Uh, so now it does have a TVG delete. There's these valves that come stock in here and they have been deleted. So that's gonna need to be tuned out. So we're working on getting a Cobb access port for this car so we can just modify the tune a little bit and that'll make it e even happier. But right now it's perfectly good and drivable. Um, and I would say that we do, we definitely have one of these pulleys. Now we've tested this one and this one and they don't seem to be the one making the racket. One of these pulleys is a little bit louder than it should be by like normal standards, but um, it's not not really a huge priority for me right now but we will get this thing out there and drive it around and see how annoying it really is if once the hood's shut and everything's all buttoned back up on the front if it's something that is still bugging me then we can change it out so that's pretty good news we did a reassembly brought it back from being flooded and we brought it back to kind of stock sti form so mechanically as far as everything is seeming it's all mechanically sound we've scan tooled the whole thing it's done multiple scans we have no errors in the whole system so that's really really good now a lot of people want to see a lot of mods this car has a lot of mod potential and i will talk about that and probably in another episode but for now that is this thing mechanically sorted until we get to drive it around and test it out and feel how it feels behind the wheel and all that stuff so it's time Time to move on to more of the cosmetic side of the world. So cosmetically moving over to our bumper cover, what the front end is missing to be able to go for our drive is our bumper cover and our headlights. So you can kind of see old headlight, brand new headlight. I'll talk about those later. But so here's our bumper cover. This bumper cover is in pretty bad shape. It's It's been through some bad days. You can see some scratching here. Some of this would buff out, but some of this definitely wouldn't. Unfortunately, this does not look like it was like from car problems. This looks like it was dragged, uh, probably auction related stuff, which is kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. And it kind of leads into this whole thing, which is this is a budget build. It's a car that we want to get back on the road and we want to use. It's how far do you take it? You know, like what level do we, do we repaint everything or do we buy everything brand new if it has a scratch on it and we've kind of decided like this being the car that it is and being at the value point that it is it's best to just get it back on the road first how we have it and and you know it looks presentable enough to be driven and start using it and have fun with it and and then see where it goes so that's kind of what we're doing we're not replacing every single part that has a scratch in it or anything like that we're just going to get creative and keep it on a budget and and rebuild the thing so here's our bumper cover we need uh the two inserts right here are uh, 
um, pretty messed up. They've lost some paint on them. The paint's been scratched off here and here. And uh, what we actually talked about doing is I think we're gonna go ahead and black this out. Um, so paint over this with black. Reinstall that there. Re, uh, redo the trim with some uh, trim black. I think we have some plastic black uh, enhancer. Anyway, so uh, make this blacker, blacker, actually paint this black, actually paint that one black, and then that'll match our blacked out headlights. So our headlights uh, originally were like this, um, and these have seen a lot of sunlight and stuff like that. Now, there's a, you can do a lot with headlight repair, different tools and kits and things like that, but these were really cheap. These were only $300, and I liked the black housing, and I liked the daytime running lights, so that's why we went ahead and went with those. So uh, first step, we're gonna go ahead and start test fitting this back on the car, getting this lined up on the car, and then we're gonna go ahead and fix up this grill and this grill and this grill. Oh, also there's a surround that goes here that is completely gone and I'm gonna buy one of those from a dealership tomorrow. We don't have time to wait for one to arrive. Um, so that's gonna be a dealership buy. Hopefully I can get one of those in tomorrow. Okay, it turns out before we can put our bumper cover on, uh, we actually have to get the headlights on. So we got our headlight bracket out of the trunk, got that here, and kind of looking at how they mount up. So let's jump in now to our eBay headlights. So this is a $300 set of eBay headlights, pretty good price. It, with my experience when you're buying eBay headlights, they can be quite a gamble, but these ones, uh, I read the reviews on them and they have good reviews and I could tell by the construction of them that they look to have really, really good construction, good components and everything else like that. So I'm so far very pleased. But you always want to double check your wiring. So that's one thing I did make sure my wiring all matched up And then you want to look at you know the components that you need to bring over before you even install them Just wire them up and test them on your car So there is a module uh, that goes on the bottom of this right here and on our stock headlight It is right here uh, This has something to do with the electrical current and the type of light that it is and I don't know a bunch of science that I don't really understand so we're gonna go ahead and pull this guy off mount it on here wire it into here in any way that we need to make sure that our bulb so we're probably gonna have to pull this off and make sure that the bulb that's in here goes over to here and prep both our headlights for the install and then we'll test them out. We got one light running and it's really cool. So we got this nice daytime right here and then when the bulb is actually on, you can see that we got that xenon bulb in there. Now there's a bit of a problem. This bulb is dead that came in the light. Uh, we actually swapped, swapped them around and double checked, made sure it was the bulb is actually dead. Now when you go to replace these, just keep in mind that the different bulbs, the different xenon bulbs have different ratings for kind of their whiteness level. So there's like, like 20, I think it's 20K and 50K and these other things like that. So normally when I buy replacement bulbs, if this happens, I buy two just to make sure that they're a matching pair rather than guessing and checking at the other one. But like I said, this is kind of a bummer because this is where the expensive part goes in. If you go down to your normal auto parts store, you might spend over a hundred bucks on one of these, but if you order them online or on eBay, you're gonna get them a lot, lot cheaper. Just depends how much time you have. All right, we ran down to the auto parts store and they had these guys to replace this guy. Now this is a 5K bulb. These are 4,200. Remember what I was saying earlier, you wanna make sure they are kind of the right temperature or else you'll be able to visually see one will be kind of whiter than the other one. Um, so we bought two of these 4,500s. Now these cost us about $200. Whereas if you have time and you can buy one online, there are sets of these for as low as like 20 bucks online. Now it's a gamble as far as how good the quality is and how long they'll last and all that other stuff. But honestly, if it were me, I'd rather buy two sets of the cheap ones online and just see what happens if I had time for them to wait to be delivered. So that's probably how I would do it rather than running out and spending $200. But hey, it's up to you guys how you wanna spend your money. So that's what we got because we are on a time crunch. So we're gonna go ahead and install these one in each light and then we'll get the lights in the car. We just 
finished up our tests. So our running lights are working, our brake lights are working, blinkers are working in the back. And then obviously since we were working in the front, um, we've tested all this stuff in the front and everything is working great. So that's our driving light, our uh, driver blinker, our passenger blinker. Um, and then if you click them down, that's the daytime running light, which is kind of hard to see because it's bright in here, but that's a pretty cool look. I think it makes the car look a little bit more modern. I think these headlights are very nice addition. So that's cool. Now uh, those are just loosely in there. We're gonna go ahead and full mount those up and then get ready to test fit our bumper cover around them. We got the front bumper on. It's really cool. The car's starting to come together and look, you know, like a car again. And this looks like a badass car. So I'm really happy about it. It's a little bit of a bummer uh, coming in over here. There's a little bit of a wave in here. And that's because of the auction yard. I bought this car at Copart and they just folded the bumper in half and shoved it in the back seat, which is just really, really bad practice. Uh, they shouldn't have done that, but it probably was because it was in a flood yard and there was like 10,000 cars. They didn't have a lot of time. So cars were probably being poorly managed. Uh, so they just folded the bumper and half shoved it in the back seat basically destroyed the bumper cover and uh, also it's got this scratching here that we can work with some like buffing out and maybe a little bit of touch-up paint but this was obviously happened with the bumper being off of the car because there's no scratching right here on the fender the fender is perfectly fine so it's kind of bad to see that stuff be so badly managed but I mean there was 10,000 cars all in one lot that they're trying to deal with every day it's pretty tough and it puts a budget build like this in a weird situation so if you buy a new bumper, a blue bumper, the odds are that it won't have spent as much time as this one had in Texas in the sun, and it's gonna be a different color. And that's gonna lead us into the next thing that we're working on. So these pieces right here, we only had one. So let me show you the one that we had. This one came with the car, and it's got a cool little STI emblem on it, stuff like that. So I ordered replacements of these that I found them on eBay, they're like 20 bucks cheap, and they come and they're pre-painted, and boom, they're the stock blue color. And you can see the difference that's so much lighter than this blue color because this has spent time in the sun and on the front of the car getting hit by particles and other things like that. And so it looks a little bit different. And that, that kind of like comes into the paint, like the paint correction and the different stuff on this build where if it's a budget build, you can't really afford to respray the entire car. So you're playing this game of trying to make it look good with the parts that came on it and refresh those as much as you can. That way you don't have to spend the same value of the entire car. Like a, a respray is about, you know, 2000 bucks. If we did it ourselves, we could do it for, I don't know, probably a thousand in materials, uh, but that doesn't really fit a budget build if you don't have to. And that all just kind of comes down to the fact that these blue colors fade a lot in the sun, blues and blacks and reds, they fade a lot in the sun. And when you get new pieces, they're just not gonna be the same color, which is always a bummer. So uh, we're gonna play around with this a little bit. Uh, you can see this piece looks a little bit closer to this piece because I did a little bit of sanding magic and I'm trying to basically whiten up the clear coat on the outside to brighten it up to make it look like that. So this is our counter piece. This one we're gonna run on, what is it? The driver's side of the car. This is our passenger side of the car. And I'm actually gonna make this look worse so it matches better uh, in the long run and doesn't stick out like a sore thumb when it's on the car. Interesting. Well, I got them to lighten up a little bit, but they are not a perfect color match. It doesn't even have to do with the lightness. These just have like a little bit more purple in them or something, and that's going to annoy the crap out of me. So we have to spray some other stuff on this car that we're going to show you in a later episode. These are going to get repainted. So they might look goofy for a day, but rest assured, these will look good before the end of the build. So um, this piece right here got damaged. Uh, I don't really know when, but when the car kind of came delivered, this is what we ended up with. 
Um, and now I think I mentioned earlier that we were talking about kind of blacking out this whole section. Now that we're going with dark housing headlights, we kind of wanted to go dark through the center here. So we are able to get a replacement for this piece, very luckily. So the dealership had one of these in stock in black, which was the color that we were going for. Now I don't normally buy stuff from the dealership. You can definitely get this cheaper, like on eBay. You can get a carbon fiber version of all these for probably just the price that we paid for this. This is about 200 bucks. Isn't a terrible price for such an intricate centerpiece. But anyways, so we got this in black. Now we just need to make these guys match. And then you can see that this is a little bit duller than this after all the time that it's spent in the sunlight. So what we're gonna do is uh, take the blue piece of this off. Um, we're gonna sand it up really nice and then we're gonna spray it with a gloss black so it'll match this. And then we're gonna use some uh, trim blackout. You can find it in almost any auto parts store. It's like a, it's a paint that's meant to be on these black plastics and it'll make it nice and black like these again. And we we'll should have everything matching up, get it thrown in the front of the car. We checked out some photos online just to make sure it's the style that we want. And we all kind of like the blacked out style in the front. So we're gonna go for it. So we used a Eastwood uh, black uh, plastic resurfacer and you can see that it really refreshes the black color of these plastics. Kind of the back is almost how they looked and then you can see on the insides how good they are and now that they're matching the plastic color of this. And then we also uh, just used a good quality spray paint for the trim pieces. That's kind of, you know, we're testing out the color. I didn't feel like using automotive paint for this go around. So those are drying up right now. While those are drying up, uh, we want to do our first test drive. That's what this episode is all about. So we're going to go ahead and get the seats reinstalled. Now for um, drying this baby out, we've been running a dehumidifier. You can see that thing running right there inside the car. Uh, and it's not really picking up a lot of humidity, which is a good sign. Once we remove the seats, we can get our hands in under the carpet here. And you can feel that there's no moisture in the carpets or on the metal, which is a good sign too. So we're pretty dehumidified and everything's feeling nice and dry and everything. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the seats. Got everything all nice and refreshed. So our plastics are nice and black and matching. And then we got these things painted up. Now these are just uh, a really good quality spray paint right now, which rock chips will take away at that, but we're gonna hit these with an automotive clear um, later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble these vents, put them back together, however they went. I'm not really sure. And then we'll install them on the front of the car and then we're ready for our test drive. Looking good. It stands out a lot because the rest of the car is so dirty, but once we get the car cleaned up, it's gonna look a lot better. So, we are street legal. We went and got registration, insurance. We did safety checks. The number one safety checks that I always recommend when you're picking up a salvage vehicle like this, brakes, make sure they're functioning. You got no brake leaks, no nothing like that. And that your steering is connected to your steering rack and all that stuff seems good. And all your wheels are on tight. We've checked all of that stuff as well. So we are now ready to hit the streets for the first time. We're gonna fire up and drive out of the shop, get on the road. Hey, there's another SDI right there. Hey buddy, ours is newer and cheaper. All right, that's police station, so we'll do a pull after that. So driving wise, so that's our, uh, that was our testing grounds. The official BS Rebuild testing grounds has been purchased for a uh, quarter billion dollars and knocked down, so there's no more pavement. We're not gonna get to play there anymore. We have to get more creative. Anyways, the car's driving perfectly straight. It's driving nicely. It's a good sign. It feels like it has an upgraded clutch, which is awesome. Uh, it makes sense if the guy modified it before for bigger power. The other thing is, uh, I've driven Kyle's WRX and it feels a lot different, but it would make sense also that STIs would have a different clutch than uh, just a stock WRX. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those two things. Yeah, I'm pretty sure when you drove it, it was still stock clutch. Yeah, but um, the clutch feels really good, so that's good. All right, let's go fast for the first time. Here, oh, Jesus. Jesus. It's fast. 
It's fast. It's working. Yeah, it's working. It didn't build a lot of boost in that first gear, but once we got in second gear and got it boosted like that, it really started to take off. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, I love boosted cars. They're so much fun. All right, so it's driving well. Let's take it to the car wash, get it cleaned up. Time to let the boys take it for a spin. All right, it was a short drive to Mexico. I'm gonna let the boys take it for a run up and down the old, uh, what do they call interstates in Mexico? Oscar, what's Spanish for interstate? <laughs> okay, Oscar doesn't know Spanish as well as he thought. <laughs> All right, go for it. Somebody jump in, take it for a rip up and down the road. Get it in the boost. Sounds good. It's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kyle's up now. I like those headlights, they look good. STI driver, or <laughs> no, WRX, WRX driver. driver. Yeah. <laughs> My turn. It always looks like there's a dent right there, but there's not. All right, well that was a lot of fun. The car clearly works. We're gonna check all of our fluids and other stuff when we get back to the shop, but we got a working STI for 3,000 bucks. What a wonderful world. <laughs> All right, we made it back to the shop. Now we saw this a little bit earlier, but after the cleanup, it's a little bit more evident. You can see the, the Texas sun has really worn through some of the clear coat in some spots here. And I think that's a really good DIY that some people should learn kind of how to repair this. We have that there. And then once we come up to the roof here, I mean, it's really evident. And that's just, that that ain't cool. Now we tested it out and you can see when we cleaned the car that the color, the base coat underneath is actually still good. So it's just sun damage on the clear coat. And we're gonna go ahead and fix that in the next episode as well as check over all of our fluids, our brake pads and all that other good stuff. Make sure that we got a fully built car. One more thing that I wanted to talk with you guys about, in a couple episodes back I mentioned that we were going to start up our second channel again, the Built Not Bought channel. Um, and uh, that was because we came to an agreement with YouTube to actually be able to monetize our videos that we were putting on there. Well, uh, YouTube kind of went backwards on that agreement, so uh, they're not allowing us to monetize that channel. And I don't know if you guys know this, but videos that are not monetized, they don't get shared as much on YouTube. So um, that channel is, is unfortunately, it's kind of dead. And interestingly enough, the term built not bought is copyrighted by other people, so I don't really want to play around with trademarks. So we're gonna be starting up a second channel and I'm looking for feedback from you guys for the name. So I've thought of be for behind the scenes, be for backup, I don't know, anything else. If you guys have good ideas for a second channel name, please put a comment uh, down below and then we're gonna start that up and uh, be showing stuff like, for instance, I'm going to Japan to the Tokyo Auto Salon next week. I'd love to film that and put that there uh, and all sorts of other stuff. We've been, we're, we, you know, our schedule right now, things have been pretty weird with all the traveling that I've been doing. So we haven't been putting out as many episodes as we want, but there's plenty of good stuff to film. And I think that that would be a good place to have it on the secondary channel for stuff that's not super build oriented. Uh, but there's a lot of cool stuff to share in the automotive world that I'm doing that I would love to uh, put on there. So so guys, let me know what you think about that. And other than that, in the next episode, we're gonna get that thing painted up and then we are heading up into the mountains to hit some snow and some off-road. It's gonna be really fun. I hope I will see you guys there. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>